Good evening. Welcome to Frederick P. Rose Hall, the House of Swing. This is the home of Jazz and Lincoln Center. We're happy that you have chosen to spend your evening in our home. We hope you make it your home. Very special program tonight. Music played by two of the great bands in the history of jazz, the Duke Ellington Band and the Count Basie Band. Now, our band performing tonight doesn't really have a name, but they are some of the finest young talent anywhere in the world. This band, even though it doesn't have a name, they do have a leader, and you may know his name. He is Wynton Marsalis. Now please join me in welcoming these youngsters to the Rose Theater stage. Have a great evening. as always, to the House of Swing. Oh yeah, uh -huh. let me look around and see. Man, I like that hat. I'm talking to you, that's why we made this like this, where I could just turn around and see people. <laughs> oh, you wearing that, okay. You, we're gonna start right with that. We have some of the finest young musicians in the world up here, and you're gonna hear them explain what the state of jazz is. I'm not gonna, do too much talking. I'm just going to introduce our music director for this uh, first half. He's a gentleman who has been a member of the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, and he's played on so many records, I'm not even going to start naming them. Everybody who loves swing loves him. He is currently the university's distinguished professor at Michigan State University, and he is artistic director of Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts in Orlando, Florida. They're getting the program off the ground this uh, dealing with jazz and our music. Every time I, I, I introduce him, he, he adds two years to the age he was when I met him, so I'm not going to say anything about how, the fact that he was 14 when I met him. <laughs> but this is the one and only, a man of deep integrity and purpose, Rodney Whitaker. Thank you, Rodney. Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if, if we're going to tell the truth, if, is it all right if I tell the truth? I met him when I was 15 years old. And uh, this year at the camp, this summer at the camp, I was 13 when we met. So, so that means you're how old now? Because I'm 26. <laughs> we're we're going to play the music of Count Basie, this first half, a piece written by the great Benny Carter. And this piece is really about all the aspirations of the African American, especially the ones who are from Can City. And uh, the beauty of this piece, he tried to capture their humanity. He tried to capture their soul, their values, the things that they held to be true, you know. And that's what music is about. That's what jazz is about. And that's what swinging is about. Well, I'm not going to talk too much, but we're going to get right down to it and swing. This is called Vine Street Rumble.
Isaiah Thompson on the piano. Julian Lee on the tenor saxophone. Dan Block. So Julian graduated from Juilliard yesterday. And Dan and I went to Juilliard together years ago, <laughs> and using Rodney's math, two years ago we went to Juilliard.
Noah Halpern on the trumpet, taking his time. Julian Lee.
Isaiah Thompson. Dan Block. Jeffrey Miller, making it talk. Thank you. 
Obadia. One of our two high school students we have up here, Cosimo Fabrizio, on the guitar. Boy, you representing high school, you're doing an excellent job. I think that's okay. Jeffrey Miller, Jeffrey Miller, on the trombone, singing it.
Sam Chess on the trombone. Julian Lee. Noah Halpern on the trumpet. Isaiah Thompson on the piano. Anthony Hervey on the trumpet. <laughs> Julian Lee. And since he's not playing a solo on this half, I want to recognize our other high school student on the baritone saxophone, pulling all that sound out of his horn, Ben Cohen. Thank you. 
Vincent Gardner. Cosimo Fabrizio. Anthony Hervey. Explaining it to us. Julian Lee.
Rodney Whitaker on the bass. Riley Mulherka on the trumpet. Riley Mulherka. That's him. Patrick Bartley. Now, I know for sure that I saw Patrick when he was in middle school <laughs> in Florida. And I said, man, where do y'all find people playing like this boy here? And have mercy. He's for real. Isaiah Thompson, Noah Halpern, Julian Lee, Rebecca Patterson, our music director, Rodney Whitaker, we hope you enjoyed this half of music. Now we're going to take an intermission, <laughs> and we'll be back and play Duke Ellington's masterpiece, Black, Brown, and Beige. Thank you so much for coming out. We encourage you to go out and meet some new people out in the lobby. Have a good time. Thank you so very much. We'll see you in 15 or 20 minutes.
Shuttles in space today. You're so so but a little little that little little do. Flare rose a spider that a fall 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 fall. Eat little balls we will not beg a do. Fall we fall 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 do. When I used to live in Denmark, I lived in Copenhagen, and one of my best friends was Ernie Wilkins. And there was a record store called Steve's Records, and we would hang out there and do things that jazz musicians do during the day, just drink coffee and smoke some things and um, listen to records. <laughs> Steve's Records in Copenhagen, that's what it was. And it was such an amazing thing. So on that note, I'm going to try and do Ernie justice by pulling out some really slick stuff. This is the one with Flintstones on it. And then he has this really kind of a little too much bongos perhaps on, but somewhere over the rainbow. It's a little over perhaps over bongoed, but it's still so beautiful. And that was this is the record that I grew up with first. This is my very first Clark Terry record. And when I went to see him, it was like my very first rock concert, and I started crying. Professor Jive! He was so not jive. One of my dear, 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 dear mentors. If it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't be here right now. The very first time I played with him was at the Vanguard, and I went down to sit in. I didn't want to sit in because I was really nervous, and Clark didn't want me to sit in because he didn't know me. <laughs> and um, so the rest is really seriously history from that point. It was just me sitting in on a Saturday night at the Vanguard when nobody knew me, and um, right after I finished playing, he just gave me a big hug. and. And everything that happened after that in my career had a lot to do with him really pushing me forward. And apparently when I would cry as a kid and be all, you know, toddler, needy child, uh, that my mom would put Louie on and I'd stop crying and I'd start dancing. So that's probably why she kept buying those records. <laughs> she couldn't afford daycare at that time. Um, yeah, there's, I have a ton of amazing records that I was able to just take for granted as a kid growing up listening to. And now I have them in my house and I crank them. My daughter dances too much. A nice tradition my mom had was at dinner time that we were three girls in the house and each, every third night, I got to pick a record to put on during dinner. And that's, that was our tradition. No radio, no TV, just spinning albums. With my daughter, I'm gonna do this tonight. We're gonna listen to On the Road, Count Basie and Orchestra. Splanky, Wind Machine, Classics. Splanky. Splanky. I mean, what a name, right? And it sounds like that. The first time I performed uh, on the continent of Africa, it was at the Cape Town Jazz Festival. And that was also the time when I met, for the first time, James Moody. I knew that Moody was performing in the same festival and was uh, somewhere around on the grounds. As soon as I got off the stage, I got off some little stairway and I saw Moody there with his arms stretched out like this. This big smile. And he hugged me and he told me, I heard you. And, I, and it was such a great moment. I felt so moved by 
the soul of this man. And his soul encompasses really the spirit of uh, love and unity and compassion and uh, fierceness and heart and courage. So that was really a memorable moment for me and I consider myself blessed for that. One, two, one, two, three, four. A tear skid, a tasket, a brown and yellow basket. I sent a letter to my mommy on the way I Because, I mean, I can see this record, I can see that it's old, it probably was pre-owned, it was played by someone. There are all of these, like, frozen moments, and you have access to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gave Horace Silver his first piano. It's just another Miles Davis record, babe. It's like home. That's all it is. Man. It's like home. can do to you ooh, ooh, ooh what a little moonlight can do to you you're in love your heart's so flutter all day long you only stutter because your tongue just will not utter the words i love you ooh, ooh what a little moonlight can do Oh, you better wait a while till those moonbeams come peeping through. You get bold, you can't resist him. All you say, once you have kissed him, is ooh, what a little moonlight can do. You got hit me one more time. <laughs> hit me. Mm. My name is Jimmy Heath, and I'm a saxophonist, composer, and arranger. I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was a tiny guy, and I couldn't have been an athlete. I couldn't have been a football player or basketball player, it's obvious. I was under the absolute minimum weight, so I didn't get drafted. I got on a horse once, and I was frightened by the horse when he started to galloping. So I couldn't have been a jockey either. So when my father sent me the saxophone, I said, this was for me. 
and I've been with the saxophone ever since I was 13 years old. The first record I ever owned was Sea Jam Blues by Duke Ellington. That's the first one I bought, and it was a vinyl, you know, and they were very fragile. And my brother, who plays the drums now, ended up breaking my record and hiding it under the sofa. My father played the clarinet, and my mother sang in the church choir, and they had all of the latest recordings. Jimmy Lunsford, Erskine Hawkins, uh, Count Basie, Jimmy Dorsey, Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller, I heard them all. Because, I mean, I can see this record, I can see that it's old, it probably was pre-owned, it was played by someone. There are all of these, like, frozen moments, and you have access to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gave Horace Silver his first piano. It's just another Miles Davis record, babe. It's like home. That's all it is. Man. It's like home. in Spain today. Yes, I saw a little, 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 When I used to live in Denmark, I lived in Copenhagen, and one of my best friends was Ernie Wilkins. And there was a record store called Steve's Records. And we would hang out there and do things that jazz musicians do during the day, just drink coffee and smoke some things and um, listen to records. <laughs> Steve's Records in Copenhagen, that's what it was. And it was such an amazing thing. So on that note, I'm gonna try and do Ernie justice by pulling out some really slick stuff. This is the one with Flintstones on it. And then he has this really kind of a little too much bongos perhaps on, but somewhere over the rainbow. It's a little over perhaps over bongoed, but it's still so beautiful. And that was this is the record that I grew up with first. This is my very first Clark Terry record. And when I went to see him, it was like my very first rock concert, and I started crying. Professor Jive! He was so not jive. One of my dear, 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 dear mentors. If it weren't for him, I probably wouldn't be here right now. The very first time I played with him was at the Vanguard, and I went down to sit in. I didn't want to sit in because I was really nervous, and Clark didn't want me to sit in because he didn't know me. <laughs> and um, so the rest is really seriously history from that point. It was just me sitting in on a Saturday night at the Vanguard when nobody knew me, and um, right after I finished playing, he just gave me a big hug. and. And everything that happened after that in my career had a lot to do with him really pushing me forward. And apparently when I would cry as a kid and be all, you know, toddler, needy child, um, that my mom would put Louie on and I'd stop crying and I'd start dancing. So that's probably why she kept buying those records. <laughs> she couldn't afford daycare at that time. Um, yeah, there's, I have a ton of amazing records that 
I was able to just take for granted as a kid growing up listening to. And now I have them in my house and I crank them. My daughter dances to them. A nice tradition.
Thank you very much. What can I tell you about black, brown, and beige? Well, it's Duke Ellington's tone parallel to the history of the American Negro. We have to remember that this is a time before every person that had brown skin was just considered a minority in our country. And uh, it's in three sections. The first is entitled Black, and it has a work song, of course, dealing with the legacy of slavery. And right next to the work song, he puts Come Sunday, because it's the spiritual legacy that allowed people to survive slavery, and it left us the first body of pure American folk music, which is the spirituals, and from, from whence all of the various forms of American music have come, an amalgam of experiences. You could take your pick, rock and roll, funk, whatever different uh, titles we come up with our music. Louis Armstrong once in the 60s when asked about rock and roll said, that's just our church music. <laughs> and uh, after that, the third section is, is entitled Light. And it's because Duke Ellington and the, the blues aesthetic is almost always the compass goes north. Uh, the blues may be a music that has a set, recognizes pathos, but it always leaves you with optimism and the feeling that things will will become better, and this piece is no different. It's such a masterpiece, I don't know really what to say about all this in it. Every kind of two groove, shout chorus, all types of American folk music, I, you just wonder how he constructed all of this. The, the writing and the, the connection of the different sections and the meaning of different things is so rich with information. And, um, our young people work so hard on this in rehearsal and they're so prepared to play it and it's so refreshing to hear people at this age playing music that's this serious in our music. I mean, this is the only piece that's really on this level of seriousness in all of our music. So I'm so honored to be up here with them. Um, unfortunately, I'm conducting, but the drummer is really, Sammy really is the conductor. I'm just bringing us in. It's very complicated and it's impossible to do this without a conductor. So I'm standing in for a conductor. It's not something I'm trained to do, but I'm going to have a good time with my seat anyway. <laughs> so thank you very much. Black, brown, and beige.
Patrick Bartley. Chase Potter on the violin. Sam Chess on the trombone. Anthony Hervey on the trumpet. Riley Moherka on the trumpet. Jeffrey Miller on the trombone. Vincent Gardner explaining things. Now this is the second, second movement, Brown. And it has three movements. West Indian dance, 
That's a, a rhythm that we all play all over the world. Mm, 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 mm. If you know that rhythm, you can play anywhere. From the Middle East, the Near East, the Far East, Africa. People speak that language. Then there's the Emancipation Celebration. It speaks of the feeling of the generation that was around when slavery was, was abolished and the type of feeling of optimism that they, that they had. And then it ends with the blues because the blues is what they experienced. <laughs> they still experiencing it. So it, uh, it's a legacy that, it, you know, it's, it's a legacy that's hard to shake. It's a legacy that is hard to shake. My mother would always tell me, child, every year that passes, I understand just how serious slavery was. So Duke, he says many things. It's, it's not possible. We'd have to talk for an hour just about what, what his intentions are. And it's, it's very clear in the music. Um, we hope you enjoy this second movement, Brown. It's a pleasure.
the blues, the blues ain't, the blues ain't nothing, the blues ain't nothing but a cold gray day, and all night long it stays that way. Ain't something that leaves you alone Ain't nothing I want to call my own Ain't something with sense enough to get up and go Like nothing I know The blues The blues don't The blues don't know The blues don't Nobody as a friend Ain't been nowhere Where they're welcome back again No ugly Nothing 
the blues ain't the Brianna Thomas. Brianna Thomas. Julian Lee. And the rest of us. Now this is the third movement. It's entitled Beige. Duke is a uh, talks about education and the veneer of success when underneath it is a lot of people struggling trying to get their piece of what is now we call it the American dream and it wasn't known as that it's just a, a part of the charisma of the freedom in the country so uh, the first section is called beige the second is entitled Cy Runs Rock Waltz and the third is Sugar Hill Penthouse this was during World War II and Many people were chafed at the fact that there were many Negro heroes of the Spanish-American War, and of course the fighting 369th had a tremendous parade that went up Fifth Avenue. So when the military was segregated in the Second World War, it really, it didn't sit well. Duke, of course, is not a person who was overtly political. Everything he had to say was in his music and he was not so much politics he was dealing with, he was just talking about a certain type of spiritual justice and humanity that he felt the country deserved for itself with all that it had gone through. He didn't see the whole racial equation of America as black versus white. He had another way of looking at it as black and white versus white. And that's, that's the vibration he's, he's on. He ends with in this, in this instance, we've chosen an ending that he put on the piece in the 1960s when he recorded it. The 1943 version has a real upbeat march that had lyrics, the, the black, brown, and beige for the red, white, and blue. But his friends convinced him, don't put this, it's too corny. Don't say that. So he, I think he was never settled with that first ending. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this because this is... That last section of saxophone writing, I won't call your attention to it. It's for real. Beige.
Joe Winhart. Russell Hall. Our drummer, Sammy Miller. Cosimo Fabrizio. Vincent Gardner. Sam Chess. Jeffrey Miller. Lead trumpet, Giomani Smith. Riley Monherka. Noah Halpern. Anthony Hervey. Patrick Bartley, lead alto. Zoe Obadia. Julian Lee. Ben Cohen. Dan Block. Chase Potter on the violin. Our vocalist, Brianna Thomas. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We hope you had a great evening here in the House of Swing. Go out and tell your friends about how hard you heard some young people swing playing this masterpiece in here tonight. Thank you so much. Have a good night.